The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus, back in 2019, these weren't just phones. They were the crown jewels of mobile tech. Sleek, sharp, and packed with cutting edge features that made you feel like you were holding a slice of the future. I mean, just think about it. Dynamic AMOLED displays, pro-level cameras, and that S Pen. It wasn't just a stylus, it was THE stylus. Now fast forward to 2025, sure, they're a little battle-worn, maybe even stuck running older software that doesn't quite keep up with today's pace. But here's the thing, they've still got the hardware chops to hold their own. These days, Samsung's already rolling out One UI 7 for their top-tier devices. But the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus? Yeah, they're still stuck on that same old software they've been running forever. Sure, Samsung's all about providing seven years of major updates now. But guess what? That generosity came a little too late for the Note 10 series. And it's such a shame because these phones have the internals to handle modern software, especially if it's optimized properly. But Samsung? They didn't bother to show them that love, not like Apple does with their older devices. Thankfully, the Android dev community, they care a lot. These developers are the real heroes, keeping phones like the Note 10 alive and kicking. Huge shout out to them for all the incredible work they do. In this video, I'm going to show you how to transform your Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus into a modern flagship running Android 14, complete with the power of Galaxy AI. With this custom ROM, your Note 10 or Note 10 Plus will be transformed into a modern flagship. And no, this isn't some shady back alley hack. It's a custom ROM, stable, reliable, and loaded with features to give these phones a whole new life in 2025. But before we go any further, if you're just here for the installation tutorial, timestamps are down in the description. But if you're here for the full breakdown, stick around. I'll cover everything to help you decide if this is worth it for your Note 10. Oh, and hey, if you find this video shot on a phone and edited on a potato even a little bit useful, just one subscribe is all it takes to make my day. Seriously, thanks a ton. First off, let me hit you with the highlights. Dex and Smart View, flawless. App lock, check. Gesture controls like lift to wake and double tap to turn the screen on or off. All here, even the side buttons been liberated. Double tap to launch Gemini or press and hold to bring back the good old power menu instead of that, ugh, Bixby nonsense. And that's just scratching the surface. There's the circle to search feature, which I personally love using on my Pixel. Plus, you've got working good lock apps for crazy customization, like Theme Park, Navstar, and Key Cafe for tricked out keyboards. But wait, there's more. AI powered tools like Note Assist can tidy up your scribbles or even summarize them. And Photo Assist, it lets you resize, remove, and replace objects with generative AI. It's basically Photoshop on steroids. Oh, and if you're a terrible artist like me, the sketch to image and drawing assist features work like magic. Now, of course, there are a few quirks, like there's a glitchy green tint when switching cameras, some S Pen features don't show up, and S Pen Air commands plus a few gestures have issues. But the core functionality? It stays stable. And yeah, you'll see this annoying warning text on boot screen every time you power on. As for banking apps, some work fine, others, not so much. Gaming, it's almost up to par. Battery life, steady, no major upgrades, but also no issues. This ROM even lets you take screenshots in restricted apps and multitask with both windows in full screen. Features or hacks that aren't exactly common. Now, the face unlock and back portrait mode in the camera aren't working and restoring apps through smart switch during setup might cause boot loops. So, just be aware of that. And if you enable both Hi Bixby and OK Google, you'll run into microphone conflicts. All right, I think we've covered almost everything. So now, let's dive into the installation process. But before we begin, keep in mind, this method will only work on the Exynos models. And heads up, this will erase everything on your device. So make sure to back up your data. Also, remove any Google or Samsung accounts you've got linked. Now, for this to work, you'll need to be on the latest available stock firmware, Android 12 with One UI 4 and the August 2023 security patch. And don't forget, charge your phone before diving in. Anything above 30% should be good to go. Here's the list of supported models. 
For the installation, you'll need a few files. I've provided all the links in the video description below. So first, follow the link to download the Samsung USB drivers and install them on your PC. Then download the Odin tool onto your PC and save it. Now to download the ROM and remaining files, follow the link from the description, which will take you to the XDA site. On this site, you'll see all the instructions and notes from the developers. If you want to go through them, feel free to do so. Otherwise, just scroll down until you see the links from OSINT forever. First, copy the password and then click the link. Paste the copied password and click Unlock. You should now see the folders. First, click on the ROMs folder. On the next page, scroll down and download the Eternity v 4.0 file. This is the latest version by the developer. After that, go back to the previous page, click on the Repartition folder and download both of these files, the Cleaner and the Repartitioner. Next, go back again and click on Odin to download the specific TWRP file for your model. The model number will be listed at the end of each file, so make sure you download the right one and save it with the other files. That's it. These are the required files and everything else is optional. If you want some extra tweaks, just download the zipped file from the extras folder and flash it at the end of the process. Now, let's get back to it. Once these files are downloaded, turn your Wi-Fi on and head over to settings. Tap on software updates and check for any available updates. If there are updates, go ahead and install them. Next, go to about phone in the settings menu, tap on software information and then tap the build number seven times. This will unlock the developer settings for you. Once that's done, head back to settings and find developer settings. Tap on it and enable OEM unlocking. Great. Now, turn off your device completely. Grab your data cable and laptop. Connect the cable to your phone, then press and hold the volume up and volume down buttons simultaneously. Within a few seconds, this will bring up the bootloader screen. Here, You'll unlock the bootloader, so press and hold the volume up key for a few seconds until the next screen appears. On this screen, you'll see instructions. To unlock the bootloader, press the volume up key once. Here's the key part. As soon as you press the volume up key, immediately press both the volume up and volume down buttons at the same time to prevent your phone from returning to the boot screen. Once that's done, press volume up to continue. On the download mode screen, check the text next to KG state, FRP lock, and OEM lock settings. If your phone shows the same status as mine, then we're on the same page. Great. Now, move to your laptop. Navigate to the folder where you downloaded your files and extract the Odin file. Once extracted, open the folder and launch the Odin EXE file. When Odin starts, check that your device is connected. You should see the indicator. Next, click on the Options tab and turn off Auto Reboot. Then, click on AP, locate the recovery file and select it. Now, click Start in Odin. You'll see the recovery flashing process begin and you'll see a pass message on the Odin screen. And that's it for Odin. Now, let's boot into the TWRP recovery we just installed. Press and hold all the buttons together once the device powers off, release the volume down button, but keep holding the other buttons. When you see the Samsung logo, release the power key, but keep holding volume up. Wait a few seconds. Your device might boot into TWRP automatically. And after some code runs, it may restart and boot into recovery again. If it doesn't reboot automatically, you can manually reboot it to recovery by holding the volume up and power keys together. Once you're in TWRP, tap wipe, select format data and type yes to wipe your device. This step will decrypt your phone's storage, making it visible on your computer. Next, go to the folder on your computer where you've saved your files and copy the repartitioner file into your device's internal storage. In TWRP, tap install, locate the file you just copied and swipe right to flash it. This process might take a few minutes once done, your device will automatically reboot into recovery mode. With this, the storage will be encrypted again. So once more, tap on wipe, select format data and type yes to wipe the device. Then go back, 
choose reboot and select recovery. When your device reboots into recovery, go back to your files folder on your computer and copy the cleaner file into your phone's internal storage. Flash it the same way as before. Tap install, locate the file you just copied and swipe right to flash it. Once it's done, your device will automatically reboot back into recovery mode. Once your device reboots, go back to your downloaded files folder on your computer. Now, copy the ROM file to your phone's internal storage. This might take a few minutes, so be patient while it transfers. Once the file is copied, head back to install in TWRP. Find the ROM file you just transferred, tap on it, and swipe right to start the installation process. The installation will take around 5 to 10 minutes. When the installation finishes, reboot your phone to the system. The first boot will take about 5 to 10 minutes. Once you reach the welcome screen, proceed through the generic setup steps. You can disconnect your phone at this point if you wish. And there you go. You've just installed Android 14 with One UI 6.11 on your old Galaxy Note 10. If you try this out, I'd love to hear your feedback, whether positive or negative, in the comments. And I'll catch you in the next one.